In this video, we're going to talk about student presentations. And many of you have asked me how to facilitate student presentations because there are often elements of one, you granting um, presenter privileges, as well as deciding whether you're going to upload their presentations or they're going to upload their presentations. So we're gonna go through a couple of scenarios. And uh, it may be a little hard to see, but let me show you this. So right now I am a host. And I'm showing you the host view. But in my attempt to kind of do a side by side, I also have here the student view. So I should be able to jump back and forth uh, and give you an idea of what students will see when you make particular changes, as well as what they will see so you can get a better idea of what they'll experience. Um, and sometimes that's half the battle is understanding what will students see, what will they do, what will I do to affect, again, what they see. So let me get started on that. So I'm going to switch back to my host view. So right now the view you're seeing is a host view. And so as you can also see, I am the host. I've got that my name in here. And then I've got my student account here. So when it comes to student presentations, oftentimes students are asked to do a couple of things. One, they're going to be asked to prepare their PowerPoint. And in preparing that PowerPoint, they either have to send it to you ahead of time to be loaded or they'll be asked to load it themselves. And then when they go to do the presentation, typically it's better if they um, are advancing their own slides. That's usually what I hear from instructors in any case. So let's go through the first scenario where they send it to you and you are going to upload their presentations. Now, it's really no different than what you already know how to do, but there's a couple of small tips that we can go through that might make it a little bit easier or at least keep things organized. So one thing I would do for that is I would create a brand new layout. So I'm going to go to my layout section down here in the corner and click new layout. And I'm going to call this student presentation. Now, if I have 20 students, that could possibly mean 20 layouts and that probably wouldn't be very conducive. However, you could do that. But let's just leave it for now. Let's pretend that we have one student and then you can decide if you really want to use this method or not. Uh, so I am going to create a new blank layout. I do not want to duplicate anything at this point um, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So I'm going to click OK and I have a new blank layout. Now I'm going to add a share. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> so I'm going to go back here. That's not what I meant to do. I'm going to go to pods and click share. So I'm going to add a brand new share. I don't want to use any of the ones that are currently there. I want a brand new one. And then I want to make sure that I have the chat and the attendees. So then I'm going to go back to pods and I'm going to add the attendees pod back in and put that where I want it. And then I'm going to go to my chats and add my main chat. So it's this the one that's not numbered. So that's the main chat that I have been using. It's the same one that's in the other layouts. That's very important. So I've added those in and depending on the number of students or how much chat activity you have, you can adjust the size. So now I have a layout that is a brand new share as well as the two things that in my case are very important to me. And you'll notice that you have this new one down here. So I have student presentation. So since this first scenario we're doing is where students are giving the presentation to me, I'm going to do what I would normally do, which would be go to the drop down, share document, and then I would upload the new presentation. So I've got some on my desktop, so I'm going to just go grab one. For our demonstration, it doesn't really matter which one it is. but I'm going to pull one from a course. All right, so I'm going to pull up my one from the course and click open. Now, as I do that, it's going to upload this. And what's interesting is it's going to tell me a couple of things. So it says smart art, charts, and 3D effects will be affected. So that's something you want to make sure you tell your students is that smart art, charts, and 3D effects 
might not come out the way they want them to. So those are things that if they choose to use them, it's probably, it's probably, uh, they run the chance of it not working properly. So for things like smart art, charts, and 3D effects, you may want to consider having the students make those into pictures instead of leaving them as smart art charts and 3D effects. So I'll click proceed and it's going to convert that file and it's going to bring that in. So you'll notice I had an error. That's something that you may run into and that's something really important to think about because it's due to the fact that I know that that file that I chose has smart art in it. So if you run into this, that may be what happens to you. So that was not an accident. I really did want you to experience it. So we're going to find something else that does not have those. Um, I as a tendency, I do tend to use uh, smart art a lot. So a lot of mine are going to be affected by that issue and a lot of mine will have that. So I've done a lot of conversions just to make sure that things will work properly. And you might want to want to test it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my storyboard here. And I should have better luck with this one because I know it does not have special things in it. So you'll notice once it's loaded, it does show for the student as well. So that's immediate. So if I am getting this ready for a student, and if you try to do that upload during the class, you can imagine that that would probably not be the best experience because everyone would be waiting. So I would load those ahead of time and make sure that you don't run into the problems I ran into where there's some incompatibilities and some problems. So that's a good case for making sure those things are uploaded ahead of time. So if you do that, and you go to the share my document section and you decide to upload those ahead of time you can have them all on this list and then when it's student one section you go and you pull theirs up because you know it works you go to the next one the next one the next one and so on so that way those items are uploaded so let's say we're we're uploading the students presentation so in this scenario they're now going to present because I did that work for them so now that it's there if I go back to the student's view here, the student cannot advance their own slides because I haven't given them the rights to do that yet. So let's give them the rights. So we're going to place our mouse over top their name and click Make Presenter. So that does a couple of things. Number one, it gives them the ability, so this is back to the student view, gives them the ability to advance their own slides and it gives them the ability to now activate their microphone. If I take that away, they now cannot advance the slides and they cannot do their microphone. So just the act of giving them presenter is like turning the microphone on. So for presentation days like this, if you've got a group presentation, you just have to give everybody presenter rights and upload their presentation for them. So that's scenario number one. And as you notice, there were a few things that went on with that that you know, could be pitfalls, could be issues, but things that you can certainly work through, especially if given a little bit of extra time in the beginning. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing this one. And the next scenario is similar, but a little bit different. So let's say the scenario is that I want students to upload their own content. So in this scenario, I'm going to do a couple of things. You'll notice as the student came in, the student is, a is not a presenter. They are simply a participant, in which case they can't really do anything. So if I switch the back to the student's view, they can do nothing but be here and raise their hand and listen. If I wanted the students to come in ahead of time and get prepared, this is what I would probably do. I would make a layout just like we have this one here and I would click on it and I would leave this open when I left the session. So I would turn that on and leave it in this mode. You'll see share nine and then the students is share nine as well. 
Then I would say to the students, okay students, I want you to log in and I want you to upload, their pre upload your presentations in anticipation of presenting uh, on that day. To make sure that when they do log in though that they have the right rights, you do need to manage access and entry and turn on the auto promote. Once you turn on auto promote to from uh, participants to presenters, when they log in, they'll have presenter rights. So for this demonstration, I'm actually just going to change their rights. So what that does is as soon as they enter, they will have this. And now what they can do is they can upload their presentation. So if I were a student and I entered this and when I was doing what I was asked to do, I would be able to upload it. But you'll notice, you see how the host has this extra area where they can see the presentation items? By default, the student's not going to see that, so they can't get to that layout. They can only get to this layout. So they're not really going to be able to mess up too much, but there's still a danger there, so I would still at least be a little bit careful. So now you could say, go here, share a document, and have them upload their materials. When they upload theirs, it'll all show in the share history. So this is also a good, uh, good reason to have them name their files so that you don't have to figure out like you'll see I have three tests here. Can you imagine trying to figure out whose test is which? <laughs> that would not make much sense. So do it by group name or do it by name. And then when it comes to class time and you grant those privileges, uh, you can have them click on theirs, bring it up because they know which one it is, and begin their presentation. So again, it's your choice. You can either upload them for them and then just grant privileges as it goes along, or you can say to the students, hey, go ahead and go ahead and go in ahead of time and upload your own presentations. And then you'll be able to do have them all ready for when presentation time comes. Then when it's time to remove their rights, you can roll over their names and make them participants. This is really only critically necessary when you're ready to just keep the audio to just a small group. And I highly recommend doing that. If you've got a group presentation, only give rights to those who are presenting at that time and try to facilitate any questions maybe through the chat. That will make the audio work a little bit better and I think everyone's overall experience is better. But the fact that you can change the rights, give them that information and allow them to see things um, and really prepare and, and practice, you've really given them a huge advantage in being able to be you know, ready for their actual presentation. As you'll notice under the meetings, they can't really do anything else. They really are just relegated to uploading content and managing their microphone, which in the case of this is the perfect uh, thing for student presentations. So I've taken you through, through two scenarios, two pretty, pretty major ones as far as that goes, but I'm hoping that you'll have enough information to make the decision that you want to make in the way you want to run your class because you really have the opportunity to, opportunity to do both, either or depending on the skill level of your students, and just kind of making that decision on what you want to do. The last thing I want to show you is, um, I was doing some testing, because I've gotten this question from a lot of you, is are different things like, um, like we talked about earlier, smart art and things, are those uh, supported? Obviously, we've already seen that smart art is not supported and 3D art is not supported. But what's interesting is what is supported is animations. So if I click on my animation or the file, I want to show you that. So you'll notice this is blank. I set it up in a very simple animation. So if I do the forward, it gives me the title, a bullet, and then I put a couple of pictures there. So I can do some animations. Uh, what I did on each of these is you'll notice each of those was reveal. So title is reveal, so it just pops up. Bullets reveal. This graphics reveal, but I did fade in on this one. So it gives the students a lot more opportunities to really add a little bit of flair and build to each of their slides. And certainly will it reduce the total number of slides if they're able to build them uh, in a certain way. Uh, so students can go in and use those presentation items. I didn't test all of the modes, I just tested the major ones which would be reveal and fade in. Um, but there's lots of other options there. So again, students will be able to use those um, and it may again help their presentations be more effective as well. So that is the end of my presentation. It's a lot of material that I just covered, but 
I'm hoping that that answers some of your questions and that you'll have time to take the time to go through it uh, and that it makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know.